Good morning, friends. It's a pretty cloudy day today. Uh, it's supposed to cool down today, maybe rain. So I guess that's why I'm wearing um, this jacket right here. I've been noticing yesterday, it's been a little cooler than normal. A little brisk breeze outside, which I find to be uh, quite refreshing, actually. So I guess it's the, the indicator of the end of summer, which is, uh, for some people, depressing, but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I have to say I'm looking forward to it. I always love every season, pretty much, whenever it comes around. Um, even winter, I sort of look forward to, in a sense. Um, maybe not January, February, once it gets, you know, below 30. But um, in general, that's part of the experience and how I'll learn to appreciate the warmer months when they come. I guess I can talk about a little bit more about spirituality. I kind of talked a little bit about it on my first video. But um, I guess when addressing spirituality, uh, which is something I, that I believe in full-heartedly, I believe in the concept of God, and I believe in um, you know, most forms of esoteric beliefs to some degree. Um, but if I'm talking to, let's say, an atheist person or someone who is agnostic, leaning towards atheism, uh, talking about these sort of things sort of becomes... Um, it goes one ear and out the other for them, right? And I feel like if you are a spiritual person uh, talking to atheists, and I don't think the, the goal here is to try to convince them that like God exists or spirituality exists because I've, I basically don't even really do that. I find it sort of a waste of time. But if there ever is a moment of time where that discussion arises, There are many ways you can address it. And then one of the ways that I feel is good to address the question of atheism and the question of God is to basically just look at our current universe and see it as a very rigid and structured place. Now there's this uh, theory that a lot of atheists has. It's like the random walk theory where we, they believe essentially everything around us in this universe is completely random and um, basically if you, let's say you win the lottery, it's all up to chance, it's all luck, so to speak. And that's scientifically, in a mathematical sense, completely not true. Everything is rooted in a direct cause and effect. Everything has a probability ratio. Everything is um, set up to be a system of mathematical problems in a sense that's the basis of what math is it's the observation of the physical universe right so if you think about it like that we think what everything's a probability in computers if you're programming let's say you put shuffle on your spotify it's not actually random it's not playing music randomly there's no such thing as a perfect random algorithm it's a completely impossible feat to accomplish. It's all set up to be uh, a complex system of uh, equations and patterns to make it seem like it's random when it actually isn't. So when you have that mindset and thinking about that in terms of probability, you have to acknowledge the fact that this physical universe is all based around probabilities and the law that we exist in is that probabilities have to occur at some point it can't just be completely random if I flip a coin there has to be something in this universe that makes sure that the law of it being a 50 50 chance of it hitting heads or tails is fulfilled obviously it's not exactly 50 50 but I'm just giving an example whatever the probability of it is whatever that number may be that's a fact of what it has to do, has to fulfill that role in the universe. And that comes through time, right? If we look at time on, let's say, a three-dimensional perspective, we have the entire timeline of the universe in front of us. And we have every scenario of which 
the coin, which is, let's say, a, a complete 50-50 chance it'll land on heads or tails, and we see every single chance in time where the coin is flipped, you will see that it fulfills that destiny of being 50-50, or a more uh, exact term would be basically uh, reproduction. Men and women are basically almost perfectly split down the middle, 50-50, like 50% men, 50% women. And you think about how it's just random when you have sex that you're going to have a boy or you're going to have a girl, but it's like perfectly 50-50 throughout, throughout all of humanity. And you think about that, it's pretty amazing how that happened. And then, so if we're talking about that and how that relates to God, we have to acknowledge the fact that these laws exist and we can't just ignore them. We have to acknowledge that they exist and there is some higher force in this universe that is making sure that these probabilities are occurring, right? And we already acknowledge the fact that there is this thing called dark matter and dark energy, which the universe is compromised. Uh, it compromises the universe of like, I think 75%. So we are only experiencing 25% of what this universe is actually composed of, right? Everything we know and see and hear and understand is only 25%. And if we think about that, 75% of this universe is just a complete mystery. And then if someone says like, oh yeah, I do Qigong, it's like, oh, that's bullshit. It's like, how do you know? Because cause I know, because of science, right? Well, it's science knows literally only a quarter of what is possible in this universe. So saying that something is false because of science is a complete fallacy and it's complete ignorance, right? So, having said that, if you are an atheist, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you need to acknowledge the fact that there is a higher force that's making sure that these probabilities, this cause and effect is being happened, right? That there is this higher power that makes sure that makes sure that these laws are in place. And this to me is what God is. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a person or an entity or even anything really. It's just the structure of the entire universe and how it works in our daily lives. And if you think about dark energy and dark matter, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the specifics of it. All I know is that it exists, and scientists don't really know what it is. So, when we think about it like that, we have to look through other mediums and other means to figure out what that is. And it's something that's beyond, obviously, our physical capabilities. So if I am a scientist or I'm someone who's working towards that, I would feel it's necessary to look through other mediums and other sources of information to find out what this is. And this is where we get into the, the process of bridging the gap between the West and the East, right? The East, Eastern philosophy is all about that um, very deep, esoteric, spiritual stuff. You want to call it like Qigong, um, all this other stuff. And a lot of people think it's bullshit, but if you even just, let's say you go to a karate tournament or some martial arts tournament or something, and you see all the people smashing the bricks with their hand or their face, obviously there's a lot of training involved in that and physical endurance, but the reality is, is that they're using some sense of that chi energy, right, to break these bricks, and that comes from... Uh, a different power source and this is where you know people get super skeptical about the existence of this because it goes beyond their physical knowledge of what the universe is which is only 25% so anyway just thought I'd talk about that a little bit because it's something that really interests me and I hope maybe you have a clear perspective on this sort of subject have a good day.